right, thanks for joining us. We got there in the end, didn't we? That was a bit... God, that was 10 minutes. We're 10 minutes behind here. What's going on? I didn't even realise. I'm, I'm quite poorly tonight, so you're going to have to deal with the old... Um, the nose and the ears and me just generally grumbling and moaning my way through the whole show. That's a good start, isn't it? Anyone that's just tuned in, we've come in late and I'm just going, oh. But no, thank you so much for joining us. We're on Facebook, Twitch and Live Leak tonight. I hope, I hope it's all working anyway. It should be, it should be, I don't know. God, right. We've got a huge competition tonight, actually. We've recently got together with a PC Gamer and we've got two free tickets for their event that's coming up in February. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Have we got a little thing? Can we put the little thing up? There we go. <laughs> Right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna warm up on this one, aren't we? I think that's what it is. There was a, we had no audio then. There was a lot of stress. There was a lot of resetting. There was a lot of um, stuff happening there. So just give us a second to collect ourselves. This weekend just gone. I was at Insomnia Festival. I got as I quite openly said on last week's show. Like press passes finally came through, so I'm actually gonna go. And it was a lot, it was a hell of a lot of fun actually. I was very very impressed. It's like huge but they put a hell of a lot of effort into creating a lot of different zones it wasn't just shops and all that nonsense and yeah we did some wonderful interviews uh, i say we i was there with my boy Stephen. hello are you up oh Hiya. Hiya. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you've set your own mic tonight you've put it at quite an interesting angle uh it's not about the angle are you planning on like I, I just kind of i had an image of you just sort of going like hey, well like, normally we have to put it over here so that everyone can get a mic uh, I normally set it over here so that we can pick up everyone on the couch. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I'm going to be directing my face towards you basically the entire time. So yeah, no, that's fair enough. It's it's so funny though. Um, Stephen's day job is he's 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 a soundie. He's a boom operator on feature films. So. Really? So <laughs> that's why if you saw the look on my face as he was doing that, it was just like yeah, you you but. You, but this isn't a busman's holiday for you, is it? Every, every Thursday is a busman's holiday for me because I live and breathe game face and then I'm here to experience like what happens afterwards, you know, after all the work. <laughs> <laughs> so, bless your little face, you came on Sunday to Insomnia, didn't you? Uh, we had some trouble getting there. Do you wanna, yeah, do you want to tell me what happened? Because I'd love to hear your perspective on things. Basically, we had a 10 to 6 coach and I was woken up at 22 by Graham. <laughs> I know, yeah. I was at the coach station on the phone just going, where are you? Are you still just, coming? Just checking to see if you're cool, mate. And I'm like, <laughs> right. Your just woke up, uh, your just woke up voice is, is pretty clear though. I bet you've blagged a good few lates to work. Exactly how, yeah, yeah. I used to work in a large electrical retailer um, and it was it was a daily occurrence. It was a daily occurrence being woken up by my phone because you ever seen that film Office Space where the guy just decides yeah. not to go into work without ringing in? I did that twice. It was a regular occurrence at Comet. So I got pretty good at waking up and going, hello, how are you? Yes, why? What's, why are you ringing me? Yeah, yeah, as if you're already... I'm, I'm t I've taken the day off and I always knew it was the day off, but I, I'm just chilling here at six in the morning or whatever. Uh, <laughs> I'm not my... If, you ever, if I'm ever late and you phone me and I wake up, it is nothing like Stephen's voice. I scream, you can hear me. I will just fully put the phone down and just you'll hear me clattering about and just going, what the hell? Where's my... I, I've, I've got no chill, no cool. I can't blag it at all. I'm a terrible liar in that respect. I did manage to get from answering the phone straight to to you, well, to where you were at the time. We did about 15 minutes. You That's did very, good, very well. Right? From bed to where you were in 15 minutes. It's pretty spot on. So anyway, we got there. As uh, Countdown Killer has just pointed out, I got my shirt. This is, this is the shirt that I got from Coat Sync. We interviewed... I'm not going to go too into that interview, but we, we chatted to Lovely Colts Sync, really nice sort of on the indie side of things, but they're one of them where they're, they're really trying to shoot up, like above their weight, really, aren't they? And I liked them a lot. I liked their attitude. Well, they've got the backing of uh, some large VR companies and, and things like, well, one large VR company in particular, which is uh, and fantastic for them. And they seem really excited about it as well, actually. So you could, I don't know, there was, a, there was an element of like, you, you could see them, you could see the excitement in them. They weren't just kind of like, yeah, yeah, you know, it's what we've been striving for, it's what we've been working towards. They were secretly a little bit like, oh my God, I can't believe it. Well, obviously part of the thing was we've got to show them the footage, show them the edited video before we can show it to you. That was like one of the agreements and stuff, so we can't talk too much about that. But I have got a piece coming up on that in terms of like some of the downsides of VR and like, how do we pay for it? I'm always going on about how we're supposed to pay for things because, you know, as people were complaining about the fact that this, this, 
show was late, even though it's completely free. You know, we that that's that's the world we live in, isn't it? It's like even when it's free, it's like come on, work work harder. Uh, there's a game, there, there's a Kickstarter called Tangle Wood. It's an original Mega Drive game. I really want you to check this out. Like even if you don't want to donate to it, please give it a share. Absolutely lovely people. I'm going to be doing an interview with them tomorrow for the show on Sunday, and our show will finish as the Kickstarter finishes. They're currently on 44,000 of the 48,000 target. So they're only 4,000 off it, which seems like a lot of money, but they've already raised 44 grand for a Mega Drive game. If you do want to get behind it and you've not got an original Mega Drive, you will get like a digital copy of it and all that. But like I said, just go and check it out because I love people doing stuff like this. I think it's absolutely wonderful. Speaking of the olden days and us all doing big things coming off the back of it. Have you heard of this thing called Chip Wrecked? This is awesome, man. I'm so happy about this. This pops up in my feed. I, I, I think uh, Oracle sent me it as like, look at this, look at this event. So... Yeah. And it's, everything's just got absolutely mental for it. Uh, it's going to be in Bornholm, Denmark, next August 2017. And Anders Holm just put this this event up saying, you know, I want to do an outdoor sort of camping chiptune festival, something that I've been hammering on about for bloody months that everyone I could meet. So I'm finally glad that someone's doing it. And the response has been insane. I'm talking... By the time you're watching this, if you're not watching this live, pretty much every chip musician in Europe will have signed up for this. And he made very, very clear from the start, you know, it's it's no money. It's just a, one of these collective hippie jobs. And I can't even believe the lineup. Have you seen how many people have just signed up for it? I think the no money thing's good, though, because there's no money in chip tune. This is the type of event where it could be great if we all put the work in and make it something great, you know, like a big hippie thing like you just said. Yeah. But it, it easier for everyone else if it got some sponsorship and they just built the event before we arrived. Uh, either way would be fantastic, honestly. It doesn't even fit on me. Like, the, the axe, the confirmed axe, doesn't even fit on my screen. There's so many of them. It's insane. Uh, Oracle, could you get a link out for it right now, please? Uh, you've got to check this out. I, I, I kind of get the feeling with Anders, though, that... He set this thing up expecting maybe three or four chip musicians. And now, like, the entirety of the scene has sort of clicked on. And, and, and why not? Why would you want to be upstairs at a pub, you know, or whatever, and when you could, you could be on an island in Denmark? I just, I just think it's stunning. Uh, and apparently, the whole island runs off Airbnb anyway. It's just a holiday place. So they're ready for it, aren't they? I'm ready for it. Oh, I'm so ready. I'm, so, I'm, I'm really, really excited about this. Really, really excited about this. Chip Battles has come up as well. I, I, I'm not committing in any sense to doing one thing or the other, but that's come up and I've, I've said on there myself that we'd be up for doing something. Some logistics, innit? We have to have a talk about it this weekend. Bloody hell, though. 2XAA, Alex Lane, Alone, Oracle. This is just the A's. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is going to be epic. This, No matter what happens, this is going to be absolutely epic. But I would say any chip musicians watching, please get in touch with Anders. Let him know what your abilities are because he might not know who you are. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know what Game Face was. He didn't know what chip, chip Battles was. Um, get in touch. Let him know your abilities because this is going to get on a scale where people are going to have to get together and organise this, aren't they? It's, it's, it's getting there already. This many acts. Yeah. We can all do it. I know everyone's like, yeah, mate, mate, but every single one of you is going to have to get in this and help and muck in. I volunteered to build the wicker SID chip that we're going to burn on the last night. I'm not going to build it entirely on my own, but I'm going to coordinate the building of the SID chip. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We should put like bunnies and stuff in it, if, you know, like the Wicker Man. If chip battles is happening, I'm volunteering for nothing other than <laughs> shooting that, I think. Did you see that? Some, someone was like, we'll, we'll, we'll do three days of chip battles. I was like, mate, no, no, no. I'm going to a festival. Like, I'm not working for three days of it, like comparing and all that. Three days of chip battles. Who's this we? Do you know what <laughs> I mean? Like, we'll do three days of chip battles. We'll do the event. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd love to. I'd, I, we can't. The, the other side to that, though, is if, if we get together... And don't do a chip battles. They never oh be like. God, no. it, it would be chip insane. Dead. If if it's yeah, if if this event is happening, which it seems like it definitely is, because the entire chip community so far has been very pro this event. And chip battles doesn't happen, we might as well just like write ourselves out of the scene immediately. Not worthy. Yeah, because it's it's like oh oh yeah, 
Oh, I don't know who's on the on the Facebook chat, but you're doing a cracking job. Is it Oracle? Is he just? I think he's uh, he's multi-screen. He's plugged himself into the matrix, multi-screen. He's just like that, oh, mate. I'm all over it. No, he's, he's forgot the mouse now. It's all shortcuts <laughs> and dun, 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 dun. bless you, mate. Thank you so much for your hard work. It is much appreciated. But yeah, chip wrecked. Keep an eye on it. We're going to be going on about it loads in the new year. I'm going to get in touch with him and see what's going on. I mean, it's August. We've got plenty of time. Get it together. This could be the. This could be. Our Woodstock, man, in terms of our little tiny bubble of chip musicians. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited for it. Final Fantasy 15. I, I feel really bad now because I, I talked about this last week and I just sort of went, it's out. Some people like it. It's become the, fast, the fastest selling Final Fantasy ever. Five million copies have gone. The reviews have been mostly good. A lot of people have liked it. It's the fastest ever selling game in the series. It's the biggest day one download in Japan and Asia. So I feel a bit bad now. I feel like I should just have been a bit more like, you know, but ah oh well. I, it's not my thing, but I'm glad so many of you are enjoying it. Overwatch, I've done a Christmas update. Now, obviously a lot of games do this sort of stuff. They put bells and whistles and all the rest of it on. But I, I wanted to bring up Overwatch because I thought it was, I just thought it was adorable. Have you seen these yet? The skins? Oh, yes. Yeah. They're really, really cute. They're, they're, they've, they've put, Fairy lights and tinsel all over all the levels. I, I love Overwatch. I think the engagement, the model that they've got in terms of what we talk about quite a lot in terms of how do you pay for HD games? How do you pay for games in the way that people now expect them? I think Overwatch is a stunning example of it, really, because you buy the game, but then there's the little extras. And... It's an interesting one, Overwatch, because of all the esports and like what Blizzard can and are going to do and are currently doing to push it as an esport. Um it, there's so much money floating around it that it's almost like the, the sales of the game are almost irrelevant at this point. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. We need some of that, don't we? Eh? Some of that, some of that e, e-sports money. Interesting that you should say that. Yeah, yeah, we should get in that. If anyone's got any e-sports money, can you get in touch? If you sponsor an e-sports team, why don't you send us an email? <laughs> I tell you what, though, I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sort of be down on insomnia, but that, you know, that main stage, we were watching those events there and it was cool, but it was, it was, Underwhelming. Underwhelming. It was YouTube celebrities playing... Oh, you mean Clash of the Creators? Yeah, single-player games. Mm. Sonic. I, I don't, I don't want to see you playing Sonic. A lot, lot of kids in that audience, though, and they were, they were big fans of those YouTubers. They were, but those, those kids were screaming. They were going mental, but, they were, they, they, but the enthusiasm went down. Get yourself some chip battles, Insomnia, honestly, because you'd have that big build-up. You'd have the lights. You'd have it all coming in, and then it would just rise. Um, but, yeah, that's something else altogether. If you weren't at Fab Cafe, you missed an epic final chip battle of the year. We we promised we weren't going to do any more. And yeah, we got Santa down, man. It was amazing. It was absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly ha what happened with Santa, but we got the real life Santa. Third year in, the ro in a row we've managed to get him now. I was very, very proud. <laughs> but, I, but yeah... I know that Mike was, wasn't going to do any more Tokyo chips. We weren't going to do any more chip battles, but then it, it sort of happened in such a way that we had to, we had to. Now, I mention it now because I'm hoping, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to show you it next week. With it being a Christmas special, it's been bumped up in the queue. Stephen, how are we feeling about that? Uh, uh, look, I'll tell you right, I'll tell you what. I'll make you everyone a deal right now. Uh, no matter how far along in the edit it is by next Thursday, we'll just show what's available. Yeah, on the show next Thursday. Because obviously, I've been talking about Stephen's poorly computer. If you're not, if you if it's your first time meeting, this is Stephen who does all. You you take the lead on all of our films, but he also does all the editing and all the rest of it, don't you? And head of video, I prefer head of video. <laughs> yeah, and his computer's been poorly. Hannah has saved him by just straight up lending him her gaming PC. Every, everyone in Game Face right now is taking it in turns, one by one, saving Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been amazing. So he's there. He's editing chip battles. That's the promise. Next week, it'll be like the last show of the year. We are going to show our chip battles Christmas special in whatever state it may be in. Yeah. I think it'll be all right, though. It's rough and ready, isn't it? Well, you've seen the quality of a rough cut. You know, when I do a multicam edit, like, it's, it's fairly watchable after one day yeah. of editing, so... I can watch your rough cuts, no problem. As long as the clean audio's on there, it's fine, it's good. It's Christmas, isn't it? I always do the audio last. <laughs> no, no, we'll, we'll make that a priority. All right, cool. I was, I was really disappointed that Jordan missed Santa, though. Yes, uh, I know Jordan's watching right now. I'm, uh, next shit, time... He was in the bathroom. 
Well, he was supposed to be announcing for us, and he went he went for a wee for the whole battle. I was a bit annoyed about that. <laughs> I can't believe you brought that up again, man. I've been trying really hard with that, but it made me smile because I've been. It's my yeah. I've, I've I've been going a bit mental about Christmas at the moment, like legit, like. Tinsel everywhere, fairy lights, everything. Well, well, when you're a social media company, you've got to just every day is like you've got to exaggerate what the day is, and this whole month we have to exaggerate Christmas so much. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to show you a really cool video before I do. Modern Warfare. They've added a female avatars in it, which is quite cool. I mean, it's not the first time the series has done it. It's done it as of Ghosts, but they've had, obviously the Modern Warfare, the remaster. It's an old game. It didn't have girls in it, but they've added it, which I think is wonderful, actually. I think that's really, really nice. Just a quick shout out for it. I mean, I'm not sure if it's going to get anyone else playing it, but it's there anyway if you want it. Right. Because Stephen's computer is fixed, I've got a very special present for you. I, and, and this is uh, some behind the scenes of uh, our radio show, which goes out Sundays, seven till nine. I hope you like this. Fucking Mike! Hello there, you are listening to Game Face on oh, Fabre International. What was that song? That was Fatendo by fellow Frenchman Cap Corp. I really like this guy, he does, he does a lot of really cool videos about how he fucks up his Game Boys and actually builds them into monsters. And he's a really great guy. Shout outs to him. Yeah, that was wonderful, man. Really good. Really, really good. I enjoyed it. Anyway, we've had some tweets. Uh, we've had loads of tweets already, actually. We've had Lily Bex has been amazing. There's no sea of Corvo. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Have a good one, though. Oh, that's a shame. Cyanide Dancing has been in touch saying, Aquilex, oh my god, yeah. Joe's been messaging about Fart Knocker, loads and loads of uh, publicity for and he, uh, he wish he thought of it, which which is a part of the issue with hashtag Fartgate, isn't it? The fact that there's been so much free publicity and it's still happening now. We were all clinging on to Fart Knocker, weren't exactly. we? Exactly. As a thing, and, and it's, not even, it's not even working now, is it? Uh, it's, you know, I don't know, man. I don't know. It was literally, like... The, the highlight of my year, and now Fartgate hit. <laughs> well, yeah, it's kind of a bad thing, but on to... I can't do this. We do so much. <laughs> I'm sorry to anyone listening. We need you. I'm sorry for the focus I moved then. Now we've got this brand new show, Game Face Show. It's going out. We're going to be on Twitch and YouTube, and we need you. We want your input. Help us make the show. It's all about you. So get in touch and get involved. Is that okay? <laughs> Attention small business owner, when is a box more than just a box? No! No! Oh no, that's just weird. A box is more than just a box when it can give you a couple of extra hours in bed, or at the very least some time to do something more fun and or productive than bookkeeping. Just bang all your paperwork in a box and we'll take care of the rest. Accounts Direct. Accountants on your side. Thanks for coming. Hey, that was how cool was that? Little pain Padu doing his thing. I love him. I love Paul. He's absolutely wonderful. Uh, if I seem a bit clogged up tonight and you've just joined us, I've got the worst cold right now. I'm really struggling, but I'll be, I'll be all right. I'm brave. I'm so brave. Thanks, Aiden. Thanks. I'm a little trooper, me. 
<laughs> I don't know why I'm bringing this up again, but Pokemon Go is just on a massive update. If you're still playing it, I, I saw, I had a little look. There's a few people that are very, very excited about this. As you can see, this the Santa's hats on a Pikachu and some of the others. They've done a huge update. The biggest uh, bit of information is the fact that they've got babies now. They've got little Pichu and all the rest of it. But still no breeding, still no trading and all the rest of it. I, I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're really flogging this. Somebody must be playing it. They must be. But I'm not interested. I've got Pocket Mortys now. That's all I'm playing. I'm just sitting there with Pocket Mortys. And I just, I like, I'm so excited for a Rick and Morty season three. I've, I've just instantly just gone hard and heavy into it. And I don't, I don't need this anymore. Uh, the last Guardian, it was released. It's December 6th. And thankfully, thankfully, after years and years of waiting for it and that huge buzz at E3, the consensus is that, you know, everyone's happy. It's doing really, really well. Metacritic, all the rest of it. <coughs> and it, oh no, there it is. My poorliness. <coughs> I need me mum. Oh, oh dear, there we go. But yeah, if, if you were worried about it, Get in there, check it out. That's what I'm hoping to spend my Christmas on anyway. That's my plan, The Last Guardian. I think that's, yeah. Oh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? It's, it and it's people whinging about nothing but blood and bullets in games. But there's things like that, man. And obviously there's violent elements there, but there's wonderful stuff. Some big Nintendo Switch stuff. January 13th at 4 a.m. my time, UK time. That's when the... The next big update for the Nintendo Switch is going to be, like we always knew it was going to be January. Uh, that very same day, press and certain people are going to be invited to go play it. So everyone's going to finally, finally know. All your questions will be answered. So you can all stop commenting and wondering and all the rest of it. Uh, Scarman said, cover your gob. Yeah, I probably should have done, shouldn't I, eh? Yeah, yeah. No. The consensus is no. It surprised me, though. I wasn't planning on coughing like I would do normally. I like doing that thing, you know? Like that. But I didn't, I didn't keep up with it. But yeah, we're probably not going to be invited because, I don't know, Nintendo, they, they never get back to me, actually. I, I I can see why. The whole live element, you know, they can't monitor it very, very heavily, can they? Because <laughs> I could say whatever and then just do whatever. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. But yeah, January 13th, check it out. That's when all your things are going to be answered. You're going to find out about the resolution, the touch screen. People are going to be saying it's multi-touch and all that. Uh, hi as well. But do the dab? No, I'm not going to do the dab. Uh, Bino has said I'm going to be playing it then. Oh, you have you been invited already, Bino? Yeah, well, as the CEO of Game Face, could you not like take one of us as like your bitch? You know, I don't mind introducing me as your bitch all day. That'd be great. I don't mind as long as I get to play the Switch. Uh, but there's, uh, I don't get what Nintendo are doing at the moment. They've they've just had. On the Tonight Show, they because they, we all knew that it was going to be January 13th. We were told that when we first saw this video. But Jimmy Fallon was there the other night, just, you know, with Reggie. And he, he played the new Mario game Mario, and, and had a good, good old go of that. Then they actually had a Switch and it was there running live, Zelda. Jimmy was doing his old, like... Oh, what a surprise. I didn't know any of this was happening. But then he had all this trivia and knowledge. And I'm sorry, you can't just start pulling up all this. It was obviously staged. It was brilliant. From a marketing perspective, it was absolutely stunning. It, some of the, one of the greatest things Nintendo has done in years and years and years. The fact that the amount of people watching that Tonight Show and watching it on YouTube afterwards, who are not necessarily in my world, in the gaming world, obsessed with the specs and the reviews. They don't care if a parent's buying, like, what, what are they going to get for the kid? They're going to see Jilly, Jimmy Fallon there going, this is amazing. And it's sold. They've done really, really well. But what I don't get is why they're doing such a wonderful piece of marketing for a March release. I don't get it. This is... Is is Nintendo... Have they got some genius thing going on? Or, or, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, they even had me... Miyamoto... Uh, wait, I'm going to start again. They even had Miyamoto in the audience. Look at that, look at that. As, as a bloody, like... They didn't even show that straight away. That was like icing on the cake. Like, look at this legend here. They, they got him to play like Mario on guitar and everything. I thought, how can you do something so brilliant just before Christmas and not release your console? I don't know. What do you reckon, Steve? What's going on there? Well, parents can only typically afford to buy one console. Yeah. So there's no point in competing with the PS4 Pro for a start. Like, if you're a gamer, definitely. Um, 
the, the thing about the PS4 Pro over the Nintendo Switch is that it's got, apart from the nostalgia element, the PS4 Pro is for both the parents and the children, right? But the Nintendo Switch, uh, they advertise themselves very much as a, ch- a kids console, don't they? Because they, they make more money in casual games and merchandise and things like that. Right? Well, I don't know, because that, that preview thing that came out for it a couple of weeks ago was all adults. They were all sort of mid-20s, weren't they? It was and all also, lifestyle. They were have, like partying and have stuff. You, have you been in the States around March and April, you know, around Easter time? Kids get consoles is that know, what as it a is? present for Easter. Um, so why bother competing with Christmas when... Easter's your guaranteed market, do you know what I mean? And they've made a, like you said, this this is it's a strange piece of marketing in my opinion for Nintendo because it's very like overt, do you know what I mean? Like it's very obvious. Like they did it on the Tonight Show. Nintendo would never go on the Tonight Show normally. This is very no. very new approach to marketing from Nintendo, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you say it's a, they did a great job, and and you said everything that I would want to say about it in that like you know they were approaching parents and it was very easy to look at and go, oh it's a fun party game, I'll just buy a console. You said all the same things I would say, but. Um, but why bother competing with Christmas? I don't. I don't see like why you would be so confused about it, honestly. Because uh, Countdown Kidder said kids only, but the ad was full of entitled millennial people. <laughs> That's not the exact word that he used, but yeah. yeah. If you say entitled and millennial in the same sentence, a bit redundant, isn't it? All millennials <laughs> are entitled. I thought that was uh, our thing. I don't know. Uh, Daryl Selby said it's because Nintendo are daft. I just don't get it, man. I don't get it. I don't get it. They cocked up the Wii U so badly. I, I'm just thinking now, how, how can that be something so brilliant? I, I just don't get the March thing. I, I understand what you're saying in terms of the Easter, but it just doesn't make any sense to me. I, and also, maybe it was to answer a lot of the questions people had about the Nintendo Switch. We're, we're getting a lot of we're getting a lot of comments about the 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 kids thing, the kids comment, and and I agree with you. Oh, uh, Lucas joined us as well. Hello, Graham as well. Graham Rusk. Sorry, I've got there's so many chats to keep an eye on. Hello, Hannah, everyone else. Hello, thanks for joining us so much. Uh, the Mario Run game is out now. Good stuff from Nintendo. Is it? Is it already out? See, I've not got an iPhone, so I never bothered o- with Oracle's it. Oracle's playing it right now while he deals with the social media. <laughs> yeah, but he is, isn't he? Yeah. He's there, like, typing. I, I, he's I can confirm he is. He messaged us to tell us that. <laughs> <laughs> Bless his little face. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Nintendo, but we'll find out soon enough. I'm excited for the Switch, though. I want one. I definitely want one. I really want one, actually. But... but I'm not bothered about like a launch, you know, getting it shoved right in me straight away. What, what, what? Oh, I'm just confused about that comment. I mean, not aimed at kids. Did you see the trailer? Nobody over 30 and nobody under 20. I mean, that doesn't... I mean, by, by your logic, they're only aiming at a vet, like a 10-year age gap. Like, that's the only people they're marketing towards. It's just very, like, broad advertising. It's fine to include only 20-somethings. Doesn't mean that's the only people they're advertising for. I mean... They, they show people on the tram doesn't mean that they're only marketing towards people on the tram. It means that you can take it on your commute. It's just a person. <laughs> yeah, but you, you could also argue that the, the Tonight Show, the Jimmy Fallon, there's, it's not that's not for kids either, is it? I mean, I guess they'll watch it on YouTube and stuff, but that's... You don't advertise... Like, <laughs> when you're trying to sell stuff to kids, you advertise to the parents because they're the ones with the money. Yeah, but you'd also show... Fam- like when the Wii was released, when the original Wii was released, a lot of the ad marketing had families playing it, you yeah. know, and and because there was quite a specific thing there they were going from there i mean there is definitely i understand what you're saying i respect the the the, the kids element to it because of course if a console is going to be successful then kids need to be involved but there is a definite theme there's a definite tone with nintendo where they are going for that affluent god i hate you people well, it's like i, I think... hate you you kidless <laughs> swines with all your disposable income and all you you free time to just work do you want to do another shift yeah why not yeah a bit more money I ah oh, I, I miss those days so badly. My little ah. Oh. It, it's like I said though on <laughs> Sunday uh, during Jordan's takeover show is that uh, Nintendo are extremely well placed with adults because they sell nostalgia and they have yeah. done non-stop for years. It's not it's not the, like a new Nintendo com- console is coming out and if you're over 25 then you just know that all of your favorite characters are going to be on it and you're probably going to buy it if you like Nintendo products or characters or the theme of Nintendo consoles and you already know you're going to buy it you got to, you got to push it for to, to grown ups to buy it for they are, they are the king of uh, nostalgia at the moment I'm, am- I'm amazed that South that didn't pick up on that with the member berries you know they they, they would have been well the me. whole theme of that series I thought was the multi-trillion dollar industry of nostalgia in yeah that's what I mean I'm, I'm amazed that none of the member berries were playing on the little Nintendo oh, minis yeah, it yeah. seems a bit odd to me uh Video games are for the goddamn nerds. Why? <laughs> goddamn nerds. Uh, play some sports like the cool, sexy jocks like me. 
<laughs> yeah, I know you're into your tennis, bless your little face. Uh, you love it, don't you? Uh, I, I don't know what's going on with the face. Is the Facebook still on? I've just had a look. It probably is. My, my internet's not very good here. Right, moving on. We, we have got the competition at the moment. If you go on our pinned tweet and our pinned Facebook, you can retweet that for a chance to win two tickets. If you don't win and you'd like to go to the PC gaming uh, event, we're going to be there. We're going to be there in full force. <laughs> And but you can use the code Game Face Show to get twenty percent off. I, I hope there's links going out for all that and all the rest of it. I'm sure there is. But yeah, it's the eighteenth and the nineteenth of February next year. It's, it's, uh, that's gonna be great, isn't it? Oh God, I was moaning about. Oh, I won't talk about that right now because we're probably gonna link them this video, aren't we? But uh, yeah, bless him, PC gamer. But I've got to say as well, actually, whilst this is coming up, we got the competition at the top of the show. We got. More press passes than we were originally offered. And that's all because of our Lilybex. She's absolutely stunning. Uh, bless her little face. Thank you. I really appreciate everything you've been doing. I've been on my ass for a couple of days with all this nonsense. And I, I've had all these insanely professional updates because she's been in my email. She's been just sorting everything out. But not just sorting it out. Actually, like, to a way, way higher standard than I ever would have the patience for. And she sorted out our insomnia thing. On, and she's she's all over it. She's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. If you get a very polite and concise and intelligent email back from me, it's probably Debs that's written it. I'll say that now, and that's her there. So big love to Debs, because uh, she she doesn't really come on air very often or anything like that. So I wanted to give her a little shout out and say, I love you to bits. You're amazing. Um, <laughs> what? So that's my wife. You're talking. Well, about. no, I don't mean I love you like that. <laughs> Not like you know, like la la la. Right? Are you are you all right with that? That's for you, Debs. <laughs> Right, I want to talk about Fable. This awesome story has just come out. It's from 2003, and Sam Van Tilburg worked at Lionhead Studios just before the original Fable was about to be released. And uh, this lad got he, he got some pictures of the game where you were like stabbing children, and like you know, like when it was sort of like alpha an alpha build and everything. And he foolishly posted it on Lionhead's own message boards, which means they could find, they found his IP, they found the school that he went to, and they found all these like poems that he'd written and everything. So he just, he, he's, he's been their bitch since 2003, and this has just come out now. And I, I, I think that's, I think I'm dead happy with that. I think it's a really good little story. I, I, I saw this on the BBC, oddly enough. I'm, I'm going to have to stop moaning about them soon, aren't I? Because they, they do still just do, look what, was built in Minecraft. Look, look what someone built in Minecraft. But they, they, they this is quite a good story. I quite like that. Uh, but yeah, they tracked down a troll in 2003, and I think that's wonderful. <laughs> Apparently, their legal team didn't know about the event until after Sam had left the company, which is probably for the best. Because there's some all dark blackmail and stuff going on there, isn't there? <laughs> I think it's amazing, uh, but not not a reason to go to Guildford. Oh, that's a shame, isn't it though? Fable was great. Lionhead were great back the in the day. First one, I was a huge fan of the first Fable game. Uh, I haven't played any of the others, uh, but on the Xbox, it was the first Xbox, wasn't it? Brilliant. Yeah, game. and they were looking at. It. Turns out they were badass, and then they just went oh, and <laughs> started making crappy, and then they just got. Well, they did do well. I mean, they did pioneer some like real time effects in fable 3 didn't they where you could watch plants grow in real not in real time but you know you could watch them grow and they would stay that way and stuff like that you know? yeah kind of cool it was kind of cool but i was promised all that on the first one and it, none mm. of it was really really delivered wait give me a sec sorry my poly's coming back one moment one moment Are you sick, i am a little bit sick yeah i should have said i'm not looking forward to the live leak show it's gonna be awful I'm just going to, uh, yeah, it's going to be, because I'll lose my concentration, I know I will, because it'll be getting on and Aiden will be like, what? Uh, if anyone doesn't know, I tend to go on the other side of the desk uh, at 10 o'clock and do the live leak live show. So if you want to hang around and see me get abused, then do it. Go on live leak go, and it's all there. I'll put a link out on my thing. Star Wars PSVR has been released. And my one and only note for this is, oh my God, yes. Because <laughs> that's all that's all that needs to be said. If you're a P, uh, if you're a PlayStation 4 owner, you're very very happy because you've just got a free update for Battlefront for your VR, and it's absolutely stunning. You're in the, you're in your little X-wing, and they're, they're all talking to you, and yeah, 
if you've if for some reason you've got a PSVR and Battlefront and you've not logged into it in the last few days, you want to be doing that right now because it's going to completely and totally blow your mind. You get to be you get to be in an X-wing and it's all oh. I'm all about the VR. We got we got to do more on VR. We got to do more. But I'm going to say some sad stuff about VR now. Is that okay? okay. <laughs> uh, so there's this company actually. Oh wait, whoa, whoa, I've, I've clicked off my notes. Why have I done that? Light repair team of four. Uh, you're gonna have to give me a minute here because my eyes are all fuzzy. Uh, they've lost. Uh, so Joe Radak and Eerie Bear Games have lost thirty six thousand dollars on this bad boy, and and it, that and that's despite it doing well, getting good reviews, selling well. They sold them. Um, oh, where was it? Where was it? Oh, I've lost it. Two thousand three hundred units, fourteen grand revenue they took in. That's it's all right. It's all right. But they're one of the few companies that aren't restricted by NDAs, and. So they're, they've just put it all out there, going, VR has completely destroyed us. We've just lost an insane amount of money. I know it's a brave new world and everyone's stepping into it. And I'm sure the likes of Disney can pay for the VR missions and give it away free and not worry about it. But the smaller companies here are, are actually losing a crap load of money chasing this, this sort of like new gold bubble and all the rest of it. And the reason I want to bring it up, specifically because Steve's here, because he's my main VR man, I want to talk about the fact that it's, you know... With companies losing so much money on us doing, you know, what do we then do? We, we touched on it a little bit earlier in the show, this sort of thing of, I've been whinging a lot about games being exclusively Oculus or exclusively Vive or exclusively PSVR, which is kind of console because that's fair enough. But one of the issues is if you're, if you're a PC, if you're on a PC, Everything's compatible. As long as your PC's got a good enough graphics card, everything works on it. You're happy. But now with the rad, with the rise of VR, suddenly we're getting segmented, which isn't cool, man. That's that's not what PCs are about. We're all supposed to be elite and amazing and together to hate each other equally. But I kind of want to bring up this loss in terms of the fact that right now, if things are exclusive to one company or the other, maybe just let it go a little bit because there's probably a reason for that. If they are losing this kind of money, then they, maybe they need a little bit of a, a shell. Well, it's an interesting time, isn't it? Because uh, being a company like Oculus, for example, is a little bit like being one of the major f mobile phone companies um, in the very early 90s, probably late 80s, I suppose. Um, Siemens, Nokia. Uh, y y it's very competitive right now to be one of those companies that's going to not just be one of the available products but also kind of lead the scene in and of itself uh, yeah oculus have obviously done a fantastic job I, I could criticize them for the fact that they were a kickstarter campaign bought out by facebook but like realistically how how what other way could it go you know that you couldn't crowdfund a project as big as virtual reality you know i did i know that one true. of the criticisms speaking to developments with that though was the fact that they then locked off certain elements of it yeah. to take away that compatibility with other yeah. devices I, i'm not i mean personally i'm not too worried about it, 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 it to get to the question it, because there's always going to be a third party application that unlocks all vr devices for all games that's that's an inevitability you know if you've got a vr headset then it has gyroscopes, motion tracking, you know, four axis motion, um, two HD screen, uh, two 4K screens at 60 frames per second each, you know. There's just certain technical standards that VR headsets have to reach and the, the only thing that stops them from interacting with other games is software and people will get around that with third, third party applications. So I'm not worried about it. Um, the reason that it's being done right now is just so that they could be that guy, right? So that they can Ex secure exclusive rights for certain things and then just be that guy you know yeah one of the big players in the mobile phone industry in the vr industry absolutely so i'm not worried about it and 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 now like the way that business is conducted generally in 2016 compared to how it was back in 1992 uh it, you'll see that it's a little bit more cutthroat it's a little bit more ruthless a little bit more unhanded but at the same time a little bit more transparent you know what yeah. i mean so i don't think there's really anything to worry about as long as everyone can at least acknowledge the fact that um these major companies are well, we all know about it right it's all news news articles all these big companies are all fighting for exclusivity none yeah. of us really care because we'll get around it <laughs> one way or another oh my new sticker looks good doesn't it That's is it your rocky little, horror one my little rocky horror lady yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. it's all well yeah <laughs> um 
You can tell I'm poorly, can't you? I'm like a little, I'm like a four-year-old right now. I was at home, I was like, oh my god, oh my god. And we got a lot of people saying Google Cardboard for the win. I'm assuming that that's, well, why? Well, why? that's interesting that you mentioned it, actually, because as, as I've said previously on, um, not so much on this show, but definitely on the radio show, is that there are two types of VR, as far as I'm concerned, in the early days. And Oculus have just confirmed this for me. Yeah. There is a desktop VR, or which I think will be mainstream VR. Well, that's that's up for debate. And then there's mobile VR, um, and the proof of the pudding now is that Oculus has just split off into two separate companies, which are the desktop division of virtual reality and the mobile division of virtual reality. Uh, the big news being that the CEO stepped down from CEO of Oculus, the main team, and has just decided to head up the desktop division of it, right? So it's interesting that you bring up Google Cardboard because uh, with them releasing the Daydream and stuff like that, Google are obviously... It's all about the Daydream there's, there's now. a big difference. Yeah. I think that mobile, personally, I, this is my prediction, that um, mobile VR will move towards AR territory quite... Um, there'll be an interesting transition between They've the all two. got cameras though, aren't they? And that's the thing with the, pic, with the Pixel, I mean, the Daydream is, it's, there's a certain technical specification there isn't there there has to be like i couldn't use my phone with it so oh yeah i can even i'm all about i'm all about the daydream i'm mm -hmm. all about it and i'm all about that the that, that ar because the hollow lens is a bit cumbersome and all the rest of it and it looked fairly lightweight at the uh, Insomnia 59. Do you know that uh, guy? That little guy who was we got we got <laughs> shots of this guy he was great he's playing hollow lens which if you don't know is like it's glasses, but it makes stuff appear in real life. So it's not VR, it just overlays and it's it's beautiful, it's wonderful. Well, it's there was this amazing guy just going like that. The, we were watching him for ages, weren't we? But you could see just by watching that guy that that it would be such a such an easy transition because we already live like this isn't a philosophical argument, but like you, we already live in augmented reality and that like you know, I can just people were asking like what you use Google for recently because they released their top 10 searches for 2016, et cetera. Yeah. Um, I already live in an augmented reality in that like 80% of my workflow is digital. You know, anything I need to know, wherever I am, maps, et cetera, things like that, it's all digital. I, I live in augmented reality. And so the transition between how I use my phone now and wearing a headset to do exactly the same thing, but with greater ease. I want a full on matrix, man. Soon as possible. <laughs> well, me I mean, there. it's better. I want to be a lady. <laughs> I want to be a lady for a night or a dog. Just like running around, or or, or me without my bald spot, <laughs> just strutting around like it's the nineties again. Just like ah, yeah, mate. Or maybe just exist as a concept in the digital realm for an evening. Like, like, <laughs> people's imagination is so confined to it, the avatar, but exist as pure energy for a week. Oh, I don't know. Do you know what? I'm I'm getting there right now. To be honest, you're saying AR, but everything's so sparkly right now. I had all those cold and flu pills before we came on air, and. Everything's going He's really. By beaches, like, as, I, as I'm looking at you, everything around you is just going all sparkly and weird. I'm gonna. Oh god, I've still, I'm still got work though, aren't I? Oh, oh shit, we're running out of time. Right, Dishonored Two. There's been an update. Uh, Game Plus lets you combine Emily and Corvo's powers. It's completely free if you've got Dishonored Two. Check it out. Lovely little update. Lost. Odyssey, if you've got an X-Bone right now, Lost Odyssey, the Xbox 360 game is free. Go get it. They're doing that. They've given you that to highlight the fact that the the last three or all three Bioshock games are now backwards compatible. So that's why they've given you that away for free. We all like free games. For Honor, um, they're going the way that we've been talking about with Titanfall and all the rest of it. So all the DLC new maps is going to be free, which I think is really, really good. I think that's an absolutely stunning model. They should be doing it. Everyone's on the same page, especially with competitive things. I mean, this game, I wasn't interested in this in the slightest until I, until I heard about this. And if it's just skins that I have to pay for and all the rest of it, great. Buy the game. And But yeah, check it out anyway for Honor. I think it's going to be all right. It's not going to be a classic, but it's going to be all right. <gasps> We're running out of time. Let's get on with the events. Let's get on with the events. I keep chatting to Steve. Oh, I love chatting to you. Um, Street Pass this Sunday from 12 till 6. They're going to be doing a thing. It's at bar 21. Can we get that full screen, actually, just so we can get that? There we go. So, yeah, they're having their Christmas party at bar 21. All ages welcome. It's totally family friendly. I have I took my baby there. Like, uh, it was absolutely wonderful. It was amazing. If you're in Manchester, check that out. I'm only mentioning that because that's, that's the one that's closest to me. That's my heart. Google Street Pass. There's one near you. They're going to be having the Christmas party. Go. Absolutely wonderful people, especially if you're into your Nintendo. You know, you can take your stuff down. You can have a play. Even if you've not got a DS and all the rest of it, just go down and play some Smash Brothers with everyone. Absolutely wonderful, 
Really, so much respect for that. We need to get him on again soon, actually. We've not had him on in far too long. Um, bloody lovely lot, lovely lot. And they're really supported by Nintendo as well. Uh, speaking of getting them on, Game Face Radio this Sunday is our last show of the year. Uh, Stephen can't see the picture that I've chose for that, but he'll see it when he gets home. Uh, so yeah, we're having our Christmas special this Sunday, 7 till 9, last show of the year. Uh, for any long-term listeners of the show, you know that our Christmas specials are always very, very, very special. So please tune in, please join us, 7 till 9, Fab Radio International. Um, on the same day, Sunday, this is all on the same day, You Collective, I I've mentioned it last week, but I'm going to mention it again, the deadline for their chip win, uh, not chip win, what am I on about? Chipmas album. Everything's bloody chip. I'm going to get it confused. My ears are again. So yeah, the deadline is the 18th. It's the same day, Sunday. You've got to get it in. It's going to be released on the Sunday. Their Christmas album is going to be stunning. I'm just going to go to you really quickly, actually, Steve, because you had Mr. Ray, who runs Micro Collective, runs You Collective, yeah. over at your gaff the other day, didn't you? Oh, for two days in a row, actually. And he listened to the little thing that you've been doing, and he was like, mate... I'm going to put this on the album. I don't I'm know why you have to mention that now. It makes me feel so awful because uh, I, I did I did the Christmas music for... I, I helped collaborate with you Santa. You helped Santa a I lot. Santa because Santa is a brilliant musician, but he's not very good with LSDJ, so we had to like work together a little bit. Um, and then Sam Ray came and helped, and, and we organised everything between us. Uh, but but since then, LSD, my cartridge has crashed, and I've lost all, all the progress on it. I don't think it's going to be released on the Chipmas album. How but, many uh, times have you backed up your cartridge since you got it? I don't, I don't know how. You don't even know how? Mate, I'm not a chip tuner, right? This is what keeps happening, okay? But this is this is how you become a chip tuner, though, because you get your cartridge, you sit there, and you do exactly what he's been doing. You make these little <laughs> instruments, and you're like, mate, mate, listen to that. And he goes, bloop, do you oh. do, bloop, do you oh. do, and you're dead happy, and then this happens. Yeah, yeah. And it destroys six months' worth of experimentation. And I'd then... like to use that as a segue for my shout-outs, because we're quite near the end of the show. It's the TEDx talk by Chipsall. Yes. Definitely, definitely watch it because she talks about that exact thing about how you just sort of pick it up and then just get into it, make a couple of little tunes. You know, it doesn't really matter what they sound like as long as they're yours um, and then just get into the scene. So definitely, definitely check out TEDx, Wandsworth, um, Chipsall, Meme Houston. You know, you can Google it. There'll probably be some links going out for it, but definitely check it out. If there's not a link going out on the Twitch and the Facebook and all that, if you're watching on YouTube or go on our YouTube after the event, I always do a load of links below. Every single thing we've mentioned, uh, I go through and it's usually in the order that we've discussed them. You know, there might be a little bit of whatever area there, but it's usually pretty much in the order that we do it. And in fact, that TEDx one will be th there right now. There's a little thing that's going to pop up and it'll say TEDx, chips or... See what I just did then? I just screwed future Graham because he's going to have to sit there and get the timing of it right. He's going to have to find the video. And but, but there you go. There we go. Screw you, future Graham. I love doing that. I love, I love screwing him because he hates me on a Friday night. And he just wants to chill and watch a movie with his brother's sky logging. He can't now, can he? <laughs> Right, I'm going to give a quick shout out again for this competition. Please share it. We've got two free tickets for the PC Gamer thing in February. And it's going to be absolutely awesome. We're going to be there. Come and give us a cuddle. Come and get in on our videos. I think... Are we going to be there for the whole weekend? No, just the Saturday. Just the Saturday. Well, that's when the free ticket... The free ticket is for the Saturday. It's for the day that we're there. Get your ass down there. Chill with us. Don't pay a penny. We're not going to pay your transport, though. You get the tickets to the event, but I mean, you can join us on the Megabus. Yeah, you can join us on the Megabus if you want. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but if you already live in London, then you can just, I don't know, you can get an angry, desolate train there, can't you, or whatever. You wait till afterwards and Graham can tell you how tired he is. Oh, don't. I, you know what? You've all been dead lovely tonight. Thanks for your hot Vimto recommendations and all that. Um I'm, I am poorly. I'm, so, <laughs> I'm super, super peaky. <laughs> you don't know tonight, oh, thank you. I'll give you a cuddle in a minute. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Uh, this is for my daughter, by the way, for when she's watching. Fist bump. Bye bye. Oh, shit. Thanks, man. Dude. Oh. Uh, we've got a gig on Friday, and it's it's a free gig. I, he's watching as well. We've got Tim Fall Hat Brigade has just been confirmed for it. Oh, Hayden, thank you so much for that. I completely forgot. Yeah, we brought the competition thing. Thick Richard's going to be there, the poet. Uh, he's very, very good. We've got Moody World. First time I've ever seen him. I've heard good things. And the Tim Fall Hat Brigade as well. I've 
begged him to come do a gig in Manchester. We're going to be at Retro Bar this, not this Friday. Is it tomorrow? tomorrow yeah. Oh God, I'm, what am I going to have to? I'm, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to, like you said, just snort the cold medication, aren't I? The little Beecham's and all that. But yeah, tomorrow night, completely free. Get yourself down to Retro Bar. It's going to start at nine o'clock, and I'm, I'm going to get hammered. Sod it. I'm all over it, me. I'm going to have a proper end of the night, end of the year, chill out. It's been a hard one. It's been a long year. It's been tough, but it's been bloody good. Thank you so much. Can I give my daughter a fist bump now? Thank you, sir. Yeah, this is for... This is so... Sorry, guys. You have to do this. Do you give me a fist bump? Bye-bye. See you soon. <laughs>